All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the priest, Sha'ar, from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying unto the flock. The elder apostle Gabar did a lesson um, three something odd days ago. And the lesson was titled for brothers and sisters with ailments. And when you listen to this lesson that the apostle was going into, he was touching up on why we suffer tribulation and why certain of us suffer through the ailments that we suffer through. There's things that we deal with, thorns, whether it's in your mind or your flesh. All right, and that's just part of that purification process that we have to go through with us being brought through this gauntlet to be purified and found white when that day approaches. And when you listen to the apostle and him go into this, one of the reasons that he went into, which is what I want to go into in this lesson as well, was the fact that, you know, we're suffering for sins that we've committed. All right, we, we're sickly and we deal with ailments because we've sinned before our God. Whether it's from what you have done in the ancient world, which there's a, a very high chance, high likely chance that that's why we're suffering affliction the way we are. All right, on top of the things and the shortcomings that we go through and we deal with as we're in the truth right now. There's not one of us that have not sinned and that don't sin to this day. And that's ultimately why we need the mercies, the sure mercies of David. At the end of the day because we we transgress you know we transgress so we deal with these ailments and such because of sin all right and he brought up the precept and i'm gonna also bring the precept out as well all right and it's in the book of uh, micah i believe let's see here This is the book of, let's see, I think it's in Micah. This is Micah chapter 7, verse 9. And it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to light and I shall behold his righteousness. So before we're brought forth to the light, and before we get our cause pleased, by the heavenly father before we get saved and delivered out of trouble we're in this world and we have to suffer through the indignation of the heavenly father and the indignation of the heavenly father could be you going through the going through the process of being purged and part of that is being sickly all right whatever your ailment might be certain certain brothers are dealing with high level stuff and some of you i'm um, few sincere sisters are and certain of us are dealing with things that might not be as extreme, but at the end of the day, the common denominator of why we're dealing with these ailments and such is because this is the indignation of the Lord. And the reason why we receive that indignation is due to our sins. That's why a lot of us are sickly. OK, I can say myself personally, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a sickly person. You know what I'm saying? But what's comforting is the fact that we're dealing with tribulation right now. And whatever we're dealing with, it's better that we deal with it right now than suffer the judgment that's going to fall behind before the world. And that's what we constantly have to be reminded of is the simple fact that the Lord is dealing with us as children. And that's why we deal with what we deal with and we go through with what we go through. All right. It's that purging process that we have to be brought through. Us being refined is that gold and that silver in the midst of the fire all right this is first corinthians chapter 11 verse 31 it says for if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened of the lord so when we're judged we're being chastened by the heavenly father and when you read it in hebrews chapter 12 it goes into how he deals with his sons by chastening and if you're not being chastened, you're a bastard and not a son. So as uncomfortable 
as it might be in the flesh with whatever we're dealing with, whatever bodily ailment that you have going through. And it's easier said than done, but that doesn't change the fact that it needs to be done. It's a simple fact that we have to give thanks and be grateful that we're dealing with what we're dealing with right now. Because it's better for us to be chastened and tried right now, who is likening us to being sons, than to be tried with the rest of the world. And that's what Paul is going to go into when you continue to read this. It says, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the world. So we're going through this process right now. We're running through this gauntlet right now. So we will not be chastened with the world. And I'm pretty sure every single last one of us knows that what's getting ready to come to the world, we want no parts of it. The scriptures goes into the time that's getting ready to come is going to be like no other. All right. The scriptures goes into Jacob's trouble and we're knocking at the door of Jacob's trouble right now. All right. We see the enterprise that Esau's putting out there. We see the narrative that he's painting and putting you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans who are you Israelites. He's putting you in the forefront of his narrative. All right. So. Whatever we're dealing with, we're best off dealing with it right now. That way we will not be condemned and judged with the world. Okay? And just quite frankly, the simple fact of the matter is, with us being in this grace period is more than sufficient for us right now. Alright? Because best believe you ain't the only one going through nothing. And that's something that we all should understand anyway. If you have bodily ailments, just know that there's somebody else that's dealing with something a little more extreme than you and they might be handling like a g you know regardless there's somebody else dealing with what you're dealing with and quite frankly just thinking about it that's comforting to hear knowing that you're not going through what you're going through by yourself all right especially if it's part of our purification process of us being purged so we can be found white in that day all right when you read it in revelation and it goes into the servants dressed in white and the white is the righteousness of the saints. Why do you think the garment's white? Because you have been cleansed before you received that garment. That white garment represents you being cleansed and that cleansing process is not easy. A few of us was talking about this last night. Pretty heavy conversation. But when you read it in the book of Malachi, the third chapter. And you start at around verse two. It says, but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. Now, a refiner is one who has a profession of refining gold and silver. And when you're refining gold and silver, you're bringing it through the fire. So those impurities will submerge or emerge out of it. All right. And. Us being down here dealing with these ailments and such, we're in that fire, all right? And we're being chastened so the undesirables and those unwanted things that we might have within us can be purged out of us. And afterwards, he says, in like a fuller soap. Now, when you go into a fuller, that's a person who has the profession of washing clothes. And it's a very strenuous, tedious process of washing clothes, all right? And when that fuller is washing those clothes... He's likening that refining to the process of a fuller washing, a fuller's soap. All right. So when we deal with affliction and tribulation and chastisement, now, right, we're being punished for things that we've done, the sins that we've committed. And part of that is us being sickly. But we are going to be found white in that day afterwards. Lord's willing, we're of that number. So think about your sickness and your ailments being a chastisement and a punishment of your sins. But. This is what's needed in order for you to be found righteous and have the white rope when that day comes. All right. And that's just what it is. So, yeah, when you're sickly, that's because you're bearing the indignation of the Lord. When you're sickly, it's because you have sinned. OK, I'm going to read this here in the book of Sirach. And the brother, hey, the brother Yeshia out there in, um, in Palm Beach, Florida posted this precept on the apostles common board and this is a very mighty precept and right there to the point all right but it's a sirach 38 and 9 it says my son 
in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. So when you're in the process of being sick, being chastened, all right, you're honing in on the things that you might have done, and you're in the penitent state. That's why the scriptures also say, um, pray unto the Lord before thou be sick. Okay, and that's loosely paraphrasing, but that's what we're supposed to do when we're in this lowly state. All right, we're supposed to constantly be reminded of the Lord and pray unto him to be made whole. All right, verse 10, leave off from sin and order thy hands aright and cleanse thy heart from all thy wickedness. So when you're in a, I'm sorry, when you're in a sickly nature and a sickly state, all right, you leave from sin, you leave from the things or you attempt to. You attempt to leave from those sins, all right, so you'll be better. And that's even why a lot of times when, when brothers are sickly, you know, you go and you get hands laid on you, but you also might need to fast, all right? You also might need to fast and humble yourself before the Lord, okay? And it also reminds me of the Apostle Paul. And when you read it in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and I'm going to get it. This is an account with Paul being sickly, but he's showing his penitence and he's calling on the Lord as he's in his sickly state because he talks about a thorn, a thorn that was in his side. Now, we don't necessarily know the thorn that the apostle Paul dealt with, but there was a thorn in his side that they had to deal with. All right. He was probably a sickly man. Even our Lord Yahweh Shai was a sickly man. All right. But Yahweh Shai was sickly. Because he had to bear the indignation of the Lord for the sins that he committed. And as he was Yahweh Shai, walking in the flesh as Yahweh Shai, he didn't commit any sin. But as the apostle said in his lesson, he had to suffer for his sins as Adam. He had to suffer for his sins that he committed as Solomon. All right. And he was even Isaac. All right. Now, Isaac sinned. OK, Isaac sinned as well. So he had to suffer for all those sins that he committed in the past life. And when Yahweh Shai came back as Yahweh Shai, he was a sickly person. That's why you read it in Isaiah 53. He was a man of sorrows and he was acquainted with grief. When you go into that word grief, that word means diseased. All right. So he was suffering diseases and suffering ailments that he had to deal with. And the servant's not greater than his master. As our Lord Yahweh Shai had to deal with things, we all have to deal with things. But as it was written and as it was read earlier, we suffer these things now. That way we will not suffer with the world when the judgment of the lamb comes. All right. So we deal with what we deal with right now. And, and just quite frankly, that's more than sufficient for us right now. All right. Because really, we should be dead when you sit back and look at some of the sins you've committed. Even before you came into the truth, while you were in the truth, whatever the case is, a lot of us should be dead. So what we're dealing with right now is more than sufficient for us. And that's what makes me go into this precept here because I was meditating on this. And now end this lesson off here in 2 Corinthians 12 and 6. It says, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth, me to be, he heareth of me. And there's times you deal with things that way you're not exalted above measure. All right. When the Lord starts raising you up in the spirit, there's a thorn that comes with it. Now, it might not necessarily be the flesh every single time. But when you're lifted up in the spirit, there has to be a level of chastisement and affliction that you go through to keep you balanced and keep you mellow. That way you don't become proud and don't boast in the things that you know or the things that you do. And it's a reminder to constantly give the glory unto the heavenly father. So whatever level you get raised up to, best believe there's a thorn that's going to be raised up as well. And you're going to have to go from glory to glory. All right. Hey, the scriptures say the greater thou art, the more humble thou shalt be. Now, just because it says the more humble thou shalt be, that doesn't mean you walk around with your head low all the time. But that word humble goes into being humili humiliated. And it also means to be brought down onto the earth. OK, so there's things that you're going to have to deal with to keep you in that humble state. Even Moses, one of the greatest men and the most humble men 
to walk across the face of this earth under under our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. But he was he was tried, man. When you read it in Exodus, and I brought this point out in a lesson I did a, a few months back, on his way to the land of Egypt to deliver the children of Egypt, or being be used, I should say, to deliver the children of Egypt, the Lord almost killed him as he was on his way there because he didn't circumcise Garsham. All right? So there was things that Moses had to deal with, afflictions that he had to deal with, that made him be as humble as he was. It isn't only just he walked around with his head low. What was me, Lord? What was me? No, man. The higher you get elevated in this thing, the more things that you deal with. And if you're of the elect, forcibly, it's going to make you humble. And part of that is just bodily ailments that we deal with. Being sick. Because it reminds us that we're still man, we're earth, we're ashes. And the Lord could take us out of the equation if he pleases. Okay. Now, this is 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. It says, in least I should be exalted above measure. And when you go into that least there, it means for fear that. All right. So for fear, I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I should be exalted above measure. And what does that mean? There was that thorn, that sickness that was given unto Paul so he wouldn't become proud. Okay? And that's why a lot of us deal with what we deal with so you don't become proud. Your first few years in the truth, you could be, you know, you could have these revelations, be blessed with the ability to speak, have abundant charity, whatever the case is, you know? And you might not be necessarily dealing with a lot around those times. Usually when you first come into the truth, now granted, you deal, we all deal with things. We put off the weak nature of the world we're afflicted, but best believe the longer you're in this thing and the longer you endure things, the stronger that thorn gets. All right. And if you ain't dealt with that thorn and you're constantly being elevated on the level, it's easy to get proud. And the Lord can send you that reminder very quick. All right. And bring you down very quick. All right. And that's what Paul is saying. As he was being elevated to the level he was being elevated to, that thorn had to be there to match. Satan came very much stronger. The stronger you get, the stronger Satan gets. Okay? And that's to keep us balanced. Ain't that a trip? Even though Satan is the adversary and as childish and petty Satan can be, the, the way he buffets you and strikes you is for your benefit. Ain't that a trip how the Lord set that up? Even our adversaries are there to aid us. And that's why it says it in Psalm 68, I believe Psalm 68 and 19, blessed be the Lord thy God who daily loadeth us with benefits. So even Satan buffeting us is a benefit for us. That way we don't become proud and we become exalted above measure. Okay. This is verse eight. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And what does this mean? Paul begged the Lord more than usual. Besought means to beg. And that backs up the point that I stated earlier. When you're sickly and you're brought into that state, it's times you got to sit down and you got to fast and afflict your soul and beg the Lord and treat of the Lord that he at least heals you or he gives you the spirit to be able to bear the indignation and bear the things that you're going through. And that's something else as well. When you're dealing with these afflictions and these infirmities and such, you really, really shouldn't pray that he heals you from it i mean it, depending on the, the depending on the the uh, magnitude of the affliction not saying you're wrong if you pray to be healed all right but it's better to pray that the lord gives you the strength to be able to endure it because that's part of the process as well you're being strengthened when you're in this low state you're being strengthened when you're in this sickly state all right yes it's because you've sinned but you're also being strengthened by bearing this indignation by bearing this burden all right. So when Paul asked that this demon, that this thorn, this ailment would depart from him, this is the response that he had got. This is verse nine. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. And this is Yahweh Shai responding to our beloved elder Paul. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So what Yahweh Shai is saying, look, man, the grace period that we're under right now, 
is more than sufficient for us because if we wasn't under this grace period we should be dead we shouldn't even have the ability to be able to preach to be able to receive these mysteries we shouldn't have the ability for a door of utterance to be opened up unto us man so the simple fact that we're under this grace is more than sufficient for us and that was his response after paul begged and treated of the lord fast fasted all right to get an answer he asked for it to depart but it didn't depart but the lord said look you're under grace and that's why we're supposed to bear the indignation of the lord it's because we have sinned the reason why we deal with the thorn of the flesh satan to buffet us is because we have sinned and some of these sins are worthy of death so the simple fact that we are under grace and we've received grace is more than enough for us and that's what Yahweh Shah had responded to Paul when he asked for that thorn to depart from him. So you don't want to ask for the Lord to take that thorn away, but rather ask to be able to bear it. All right. That's why Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of a Mashiach may rest upon me. So think of that as you're in your low sickly state. All right. When you're brought in this low state, you glory rather in your infirmities that the power of Yahweh Shai will rest upon you. Okay? And I know I said I'd end it off here, but I actually end it here. And this is going to be in, um, let's see here. This is in Psalms chapter 26, verse 2. And it reads, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Now, when you go into this word reigns here in the Hebrew, and let's pull this word reigns up. That word is pronounced kalaya in the Hebrew. And that's also where you get the word kohler from. Okay? That's where you get the word kohler from. Goes into your health. All right? Matter of fact, this word kalaya, um, I'll go back to it. That's the root. But when you go into kalaya, that's where you get kohler from. But the word means kidneys or of a physical organ. All right. So you're asking for the Lord to try your reins. There's times that you will deal with bodily and fleshly ailments. All right. And your kidney is a bodily ailment, an actual physical organ, not necessarily saying it's going to always be your kidneys that are being attacked when you're tried. All right. But it goes into your bodily ailments. And also, too, back in the ancient world, when you look at the kidneys, all right, those hold that like those hold urine. All right. And when you go into that, really, he's asking for the deepest, the deepest depths of his fear to be tried. He's asking for the Lord to take him through the gauntlet, knowing that he sinned, knowing that he had transgressed against the heavenly father. All right. So he's asking for the Lord to make him right in the form of trying his reins. All right. So like I meant to say, make him white, trying his reins. So when you ask for the Lord to try your range, you're asking the Lord to take you into the darkest depths of the abyss to be tried to see if you're found worthy. All right. You're asking for the Lord to try your, your levels of fear so you will be fearless. And that's why, you know, even in certain shows and cartoons, when people get scared, they piss themselves. All right. It goes into with the kidneys. So when you ask to be examined by the Lord and proven by the lord it's going to come in various ways and part of that is dealing with fleshly ailments and again the balance of that even goes into you sinned anyway so you're going to have to bear the indignation of the lord because you've sinned all right and the reason why you're sickly and your organs might be in the process of failing whatever the case is is because you're being tried and you're being chastened for things that you've done okay so lord's willingness was edifying and comforting unto you all especially to you all that are dealing with bodily ailments and fleshly ailments and such remember when jacob fought that angel he got his leg his hip torn out of place and he received the name of israel after his hip was torn out of place so how much that apply how much, how much should we think of that and apply that to our walk in the physical ailments the things that we deal with all right his name got changed to Israel after he was brought low into that state where he couldn't even move no more. Okay. So I'm going to end it there.
Lord's willingness is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing unto your elect, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.